This is a demonstration of how to determine the formula of a hydrate. I'm going to be using copper sulfate. I'll take you through the whole experiment and then I'll take you through all of the calculations from very beginning to very end. If you just want to uh, watch the calculations, check out the description of my video below. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do things. So first step you want to do is uh, weigh your crucible and lid. Um, hopefully your balance reads zero. And we'll put that on there. And you want to write that number uh, down. Okay. Next, what we will do is measure out some copper sulfate. Your exact procedure will tell you how many grams approximately to put into your crucible. This is mainly just a demonstration, so I'm not too interested in reading a procedure or describing all the details or even introducing what a hydrate is. You probably have a lab that uh, describes that already. So I filled this crucible about halfway up. Let's go ahead and weigh with the lid again. You wanna make sure you always weigh the lid and the crucible body. All right. And of course, the basic idea here is that uh, we can heat this up with a flame and this will cause the water molecules that are encapsulated or entrapped in the crystal to uh, be released. And the mass should decrease as the water comes out. The water that's in this crystal is actually part of the compound, the copper sulfate hydrate but when the water comes out, it goes away as steam and into the atmosphere. And so it decreases in mass. And I'll position the camera right here for the duration. So let's get this fired up here. And again, I'm not worried about the procedure and being all careful and stuff. I'm just uh, blasting on this and letting it go. Generally, a procedure will tell you to leave the lid off to enable the steam to come off freely. Um, sometimes we leave the lid on in the beginning parts of the experiment because uh, there might be some, some ejection of material as the steam passes through the uh, solid. So we'll do that for a few minutes. Um, right now, the crystal has uh, kind of a characteristic dark blue color to it. Okay, um, it's been about 10 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and cool this uh, down to room temperature. And uh, most procedures, they want you to cool this while it's covered. And I just wanna show you what the uh, crystals look like. Um, it looks a little white now. In fact, it might look a little pale yellow because of some sulfur that's uh, possibly decomposing as I heat this too strongly. So I'll now uh, cool this down. Again, we wanna keep it covered because water from the atmosphere could absorb back into this crystals and uh, give us a weight increase. So we wanna cool it with the lid covered and I'll let that go 10 minutes and then I will come back. All right, we've been cooling this crucible for about 10 minutes and it's cool to the touch now. And we'll come over here to the balance and we'll weigh it. Uh, your balance should read uh, zero. If not, hit the zero or the tear button. And we'll go ahead and put that on there and take a reading there. And that's it, we're done with the lab. I'll take you through the calculations now. Here's the uh, part of the video where I take you through the calculations to calculate the formula of the hydrate. So we're messing around with copper sulfate. 
and uh, we don't know if that's a one, two, three, four, or five, and basically we're trying to figure out what is N. If N is three, we would call the substance copper sulfate trihydrate, or if N is four, we would call it copper sulfate tetrahydrate. Uh, the way we determine it is by uh, mass differences and then calculating moles and going from there. I'll show you all of this. So uh, we have the mass of the crucible, which I've written that number down, 22.68 grams. The mass of the crucible and the hydrate, remember that's the copper sulfate that contains water uh, molecules entrapped within the crystalline lattice. That's 25.24 grams. And then um, the mass of the crucible and the anhydrous. Anhydrous means without water or uh, dry. Um, it's after we heated it and the water was removed and the mass went down about a gram to 24.23 grams. So we have to do a few calculations. So grab a periodic table and then a calculator, okay? And we need to calculate some formula weights and things like that, okay? Uh, as background information, the first thing you should do is calculate the molar mass of water. Um, I'm not going to go through the steps required to do this, but um, I'm using the uh, average atomic mass uh, masses from ptable.com. They have some great periodic tables that you can print out. On the very bottom of ptable.com, you'll see a link. PDF. Click that and you'll be able to select a uh, periodic table that you can print. So 18.015. And then we also want to know the molar mass of copper sulfate. That's without water. We don't know how many water molecules are in here or how many we'll calculate really. So Copper is, well, I'm going to do, uh, do four oxygens first. So four times 15.999. Add one sulfur, 32.06. And a copper atom weighs 63.546 atomic mass units or grams per mole. So here we go, 159. 602. Now I'm going to check this so the whole video is not wrong. Great. Got the same answer twice. All right, so um, that's it. We're done with the periodic table. Not what I calculated though. So let's do the steps. All right. So step one. We want to first calculate uh, the mass of water that was lost in this reaction. And so uh, this is the hydrate with water. This is the anhydrate without water. So that difference is going to be, you can see just by examination, 1.01 grams. But I'll show you the math in case your uh, chemistry instructor really would like you to show the math. Now, when you show the map, just don't write 1.01 grams because we have different masses here. We have grams of the crucible, grams of water, grams of copper sulfate, grams of copper sulfate hydrate. So write, H, uh, write um, H2O after that, okay? So we got grams of water, and that's a substance that's involved in this chemical reaction. Now we wanna know uh, the grams of copper sulfate, okay? That's anhydrous. So how many copper sulfate grams do we have without the water molecules, okay? Now you can see from this entry here, this is the mass of the crucible and the dry salt, okay, the dry substance. And if we subtract the mass of the crucible, this difference, there's no water, right, in this or this mass. So if we subtract these two numbers, we will find the mass of just the pure dry, you know, copper sulfate. So let's do that, okay? So this is called, step one is the mass of water. Step two will be the mass of copper sulfate with 
no water. And so it's going to be 24.23 grams. And we want to subtract 22.68 grams. Okay, and again, show your work in case uh, you're going to be graded on your ability to show work. And I get 1.55 grams. Now I'm just using a top loading balance here for this demonstration so everything's accurate out to the hundredths place, okay? So you wanna maintain the hundredths place for all of your significant figures or your digits here, okay? Whoops, that's copper sulfate. All right, so I know the grams of copper sulfate, I know the grams of water. The next step now is to calculate moles, okay? Because these numbers in the chemical formulas, the subscripts are all moles. So let's calculate moles of water. And we do that by dividing by the molar mass. And I really like to go to town with my units here. I just don't put grams or moles but I put the chemical name now because uh, we'll see a similar formula for the copper sulfate. So uh, when you're watching uh, sig figs here, count them up. There's three sig figs here. The periodic table is generally much more accurate than any reading we do in the lab. So we want to, uh, whatever we get on our calculator, express this as three significant figures. So that's moles of water. Remember, these zeros on the left uh, are called leading zeros. Uh, and they do not count towards the significant figures in the number. So five, six, and one are the significant figures for this example. Um, can you see that on the screen? Let me move this a little bit. All right. Let me double check again, just to make sure uh, I don't mess up the whole YouTube community here. 1.01 divided by 18.015. Okay, I'm getting the same answer twice. Now, we want to do the same thing for moles of copper sulfate. So this is the dry stuff, right? So this is the mass of the dry copper sulfate. This is the mass, the moles of the dry copper sulfate. Uh, this is copper two sulfate, in case you're wondering about the name. So uh, 1.55 grams times one mole of copper two sulfate divided by um, 159.602 grams of copper two sulfate. Uh, the grams of copper sulfate cancels here, and we'll be left with moles. So remember, these zeros on the left are not significant. My data is accurate only to three significant figures. So my final answer, I round that off to three sig figs. All right, let's put some units on that. This is mole copper sulfate, okay? Now what we do is we calculate our ratio. So we wanna uh, just calculate the fraction. So put moles of H2O over moles of copper sulfate. So that would be step five. This is gonna be your moles of water divided by moles of the anhydrate or the anhydrous salt. Okay. This will be your formula no matter what crazy chemical your instructor might give you, whether it's copper sulfate, magnesium sulfate, or uh, just some weird kind of thing. 
Uh, so you want to just take those two numbers that you calculate here and just calculate the ratio. And when we do this on our calculator, I'll show you what we get and then we'll round it up again. And on my calculator, I calculated this ratio right here to be 5.7775, etc. Okay. Now, if I want to keep three sig figs, I would just write this. The moles cancel, so that's my um, number there. And the last step here would be to round this to uh, the nearest whole number. Uh, 5.78 is closer to 6, so we would round this to 6. So step 6 would be to round to a whole number. My final answer is six. Um, so I can come back up to this balanced chemical equation now, and I can replace, I can write the, 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 the answer to this question. N is six. I can put a six right here, and I can put a six in front of here. And this equation right here reads copper sulfate hexahydrate thermally decomposes or yields copper two sulfate and six water molecules. So the name of the substance would be copper two sulfate hexahydrate. Okay. Uh, hexa means six. And so I don't have anything else to discuss. That's the steps and I hope you like this video. Please uh, consider subscribing if you like to see this content. And uh, thanks for watching.